Well, the Treasury Department is warning that a debt default that could come on October 16th, according to the Treasury Secretary, could trigger economic calamity. We're here tonight to expose the uh, debt ceiling truth, if we may, tonight. To put it in perspective for us, the, the government has, first of all, revenue per month of $250 billion. The debt interest payment is $30 billion. And President Obama has the power to prioritize spending and pay not only the debt interest, but Social Security, uh, our service members' salaries, Medicare. And joining us now to guide us through all of this is David Stockman. He is uh, the former head of office and management uh, uh, and budget under President Ronald Reagan. David, it's great to have you with us. Very and we are also joined by Chris Edwards. He's director of tax policy studies at the Cato Institute. It is terrific to have you here, Chris. Thanks, Lou. Uh, let, let, David, let me turn to you first. How can there be so much hyperbole and so much, uh, frankly, uh, what a good friend of, uh, of mine calls gross over-exaggeration <laughs> uh, about this? Well, that, that's the right word for it. Uh, I think if we cut to the chase and make clear, there will be no default on the public debt unless President Obama orders it, because he has the power to allocate or prioritize the revenue coming in, and therefore October 16th is a phony date designed to lever the Congress and to intimidate uh, the Republicans who are finally trying to stand up uh, for the future of this country and stop the massive increase in debt. Now, um, there is uh, no constitutional feature that says he can't allocate if, he, uh, if we're out of debt ceiling. There is no law that says he can't. And I can't imagine the Supreme Court is going to step in with a restraining order and say, you can't use 10% of the revenue coming in to pay the debt and then beyond that do some other things. Now, why is the Beltway so strongly opposed? because it would force a negotiation over time to get some real change in reform As, to stop the entitlement machine. And that's, which what, is they're a, which has occurred, that's what they're hiding. Which has occurred uh, over uh, our history. Uh, Chris, your thoughts, the, the idea that default is now being characterized in such dramatic, uh, and, and frankly, employing this administration, employing such rhetoric of fear, I mean, this is a real contrast with a, with a man who was elected on hope and change to be engaging in this kind of, I'll say what it, it seems to be, fear-mongering. No, no, that's exactly right. And what, I mean, you, for one political party to use either a government shutdown or the debt limit to try to get some um, policy uh, proposals of theirs considered by the White House is an entirely reasonable thing that's happened many times uh, during uh, David's tenure in the, in the White House and in the 90s as well. So this is a normal thing. I mean, the problem here is, is that the, President Obama and the Democrats excluded the Republicans from the Obamacare uh, uh, policy right from the beginning. The, Obamacare got no Republican votes in the House or Senate. Right. And ever since, uh, President Obama has made these unilateral decisions on changing Obamacare. So the Republicans, of course, feel excluded. And, uh, and so they're doing what I think is reasonable, is they're using the leverage that is available to them to try to get some changes in this bad law. I want to talk to you both about the position that, that you know, there have been two reports. We talked earlier with uh, Congressman Doc Hastings, uh, who said that there is no baked-in deal on the continuing resolution or a, a, a number, uh, and that the shutdown will go on because the leadership is absolutely committed uh, to maintaining their position and that there is solidarity. But the truth of the matter is that uh, if uh, the truth is that there is no way in the world this can go on uh, beyond the, seven, the date 17 October if the Republicans don't feel they're going to uh, win in the uh, public mm -hmm. opinion polls. And, and right now, Mr. Obama is losing badly. Right. But I think that's why we're into the uh, accelerated fear mongering. That's why we're into the name calling, because the establishment dreads the day when it becomes clear that there is no Armageddon, there is no default, the president will pay the interest. It's only 30 billion, 10% of the total right. revenue coming in. 